Hey guys, so this is going to be the video for the central limit theorem for sums. So just as to recap central limit theorem in a nutshell, and what we've gone over in the last video, is if you have some like wonky distribution, and even if it's like a discrete distribution, or there's some weird distribution going on here, and suppose I take a sample, you know, we have n equals, let's suppose, 5. And I take 5 random samples. And suppose my random samples come from here, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those 5. And suppose those numbers, so this was just choosing, okay, so choose 5 things out of that distribution randomly. And suppose that 5 list of numbers was 1, 2, 7, 5, and 3. Yeah, making this up. What we did in the last video is we said, okay, well, here is our sample. Here's our the first sample. And then we're going to find our, sorry, our first sample. The mean of our first sample, in this case, 8, 7, 15, plus 2, 17, plus 1, 18, divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be 3 and 3 fifths, so 3.6. So, and then we did this like, you know, like a billion times, s of 10,000 or billion or whatever. And we found all of these means, and then we plotted them, and we realized, whoa, that looks really close to a normal distribution. And the mean was the same mean, so a mu of x, equaled mu of x bar. So our means were exactly the same. Our standard deviation in the original was sigma of x, and then our standard deviation in the distribution of the sample means became standard deviation divided by the square root of n. In our case, n was 5. So original distribution, original mean, original standard deviation for means they went to, so the mean went to the same thing, and the standard deviation went to standard deviation divided by square root of n. But everything, relatively speaking, was the same. So this, again, this whole thing that I just drew up here, that was for means, okay? We took a sampling distribution for the mean. Okay, so that was last time. But what we're doing now is we are doing sums. So everything in 7.5 was referring to means. Now we are going to refer to sums. So as a breakdown, so this time now what's happening is suppose, I'll make this a continuous distribution, suppose I have a weird distribution. And let's say, so now my n is 5. Let's say I drop down, I choose 5 random things from this distribution, suppose those five random numbers happen to be 1, 3, 6, 2, and 4. Okay. Now we're not taking the sample mean. Now we're taking, this is a sum. Now we're taking the sum of these guys, okay, which means add them up. So the sum of this sample is now 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 14 is 16. And now do this 10,000 times, and then take the sums 10,000 times, so 10,000. So take 10,000 samples of size 5, sum them all up, gather a list of all of these sums, and central limit theorem says, okay, that will also become a normal distribution. But our mean is not going to go to our, our mean is going to change and our standard deviation is going to change. But just so you know, this is what we're doing. Okay, this is the central limit now for sums. So again, suppose x is a random variable with distribution that may be known or unknown. Okay, so nuts distribution. And suppose mu of x is the mean of x, sigma x is the standard deviation of x. This is all for the original distribution. Okay, so starting distribution. If you draw random samples of size n, then as n increases, the random variable 
This is sum of x. Sum of x. Consisting of sums. So again, this is all about sums. It tends to be normally distributed. Okay, so all of this goes towards a normal distribution. That's the whole deal with central limit theorem. Here is our notation for the distribution. This is super, super important. So the distribution of the sums of x tends to a normal distribution, but your new mean, your new mean is now n times the old mean. Your new standard deviation, so this is standard deviation, your new standard deviation is the square root of your n times the original standard deviation. This, if you get nothing else, is probably the most important thing from this video. The mean tends towards n times the old mean, and the standard deviation goes towards square root of n times the standard deviation. Okay, now let's use all of this in practice. For the calculator, so we're going to use normal CDF and inverse normal again. So normal CDF, lower, so same thing, you go from lower to upper. Now the mean is now n times the original mean. And the standard deviation is now the square root of n times the original standard deviation. So original mean, original standard deviation. So now here's we do calculators of the sample distribution for the sums. Okay. So how is this going to work in practice? An unknown distribution has a mean of 90. So that mean of 90, this here is that original mean, or mu of x, and standard deviation of 15. This is the original standard deviation, or sigma x. The sample size of 80, this is n, is drawn randomly from a population. Find the probability that the sum, so I can't highlight this enough, we're dealing with sums of the 80 values, or the total of 80 values, is more than 7,500. Okay, so what are we doing? Well, the mean of the sums n times mu of x, okay, right? This is what we said the new mean is going to be. Here's the old mean, goes here. n is 80, so that's going to be 80 times 90, 7,200. 7, standard deviation, remember, goes towards square root of n times the old standard deviation. Old standard deviation is 15, n is 80. So square root of 80 times 15. The sum of the 80 values is 7,500. We get that, again, from the problem. So in your calculator, and here's what we're doing. We want to try to find all the area greater than 7,500 in our sample distribution of our sums. So in our calculator, plug in lower value, 7,500, upper value, or think of this as 10 to the 99th power. 80 times 90, because this right here is your new mean. This right here is your new standard deviation. Okay, so it's the lower value, up your value, mean standard deviation, but our new mean is mean times n. Our new standard deviation is standard deviation times square root of n. Okay, so we plug this in the calculator and we get 0 0.0127. Alright, let's do some more. So an unknown distribution of the mean of 90 and standard deviation of 15. Sample size of 80 is drawn randomly from the population. So we're not going to go over this too much, but I'll, I'll touch it briefly here. Find the sum that, that is 1.5 standard deviations above the mean of the sums. This is dealing with z-scores. So find the sum. So this are here sums. This is our notation for our, our sum distribution. Where z is 1.5. Right? If you're 1.5 standard deviations above the mean, that means your z-score equals positive 1.5. Alright, this is from z-score formula. It's just a little bit rearranged. So n times mu of x. Remember that's new mean. This right here is new standard deviation times the z-score, so 1.5. So all of our numbers filled in, and we get 7,401.2. Okay, again, that's not going to be the most useful for us, but it's still good to know. Next, the mean number of minutes for an app engagement by a tablet is 8.2 minutes. Suppose the standard deviation is 1 minute. Take a sample size of 70. A. 
what are the mean and standard deviations for the sums? So the new mean, n times the old mean, which we have right here. The new mean, n times the old mean. n was 70, old mean was 8.2. There's your new mean. Standard, the new standard deviation, there's the formula. It's square root of n times the old standard deviation. n is 70. The old standard deviation is 1. Multiply these two guys together, 8.37 minutes. All right, next. So finding 95th percentile. So this is what we're going to use the inverse normal for. So if k is the 95th percentile, use inverse normal, 0.95 for 95th percentile, new mean, mean times n, which is right here, new standard deviation, square root of n times the old standard deviation, which is 1, throw all this into the inverse normal, get out 587.76. Okay. So the whole point of this is understanding that your new mean goes to n times the old mean, and your new standard deviation goes to square root of n times the old standard deviation. If you got that, you can do almost anything in this section. All right, I think we have maybe one more example. So same setup. Find the probability that the sum of the samples is at least 10 hours. So this is what we're going to do here. So same calculator thing. We're going to change 10 hours into minutes, 600 minutes. Normal CDF, we want as at least, so that's a greater than. So here's our lower. Here is our upper, or our 10 to the 99th power. So we want from 600 to infinity. Our new mean, which is n times mu of x. Our new standard deviations, which is the square root of n times the old standard deviation. So we plug all this in the calculator, we get 0 0.0009. So again, your new mean for, this, for the distribution of the sums is n times the old mean. Your new standard deviation is square root of n times the old standard deviation. And that's it. So please, as always, once you guys have questions, please ask and make sure you guys are doing the example problems.